was a rumble in the jungle once I heard dad was outside again counting birds And mama plugged in the nightlight and I saw the queen of the world Mama plugged in the nightlight and I saw the queen of the world Welcome to the Golden Hour Birth Podcast We are so happy you're joining us today I am... Your co-host, Liz. And I'm your other co-host, Natalie. And today we have a very special podcast for you today. It's the birth story of my lovely co-host, Natalie. And it's a very special day because it is Wesley's first birthday today. (laughs) So let's um, get started. And why don't you tell us about a little bit about your family and your pregnancy, and let's get into it. Yeah. So, obviously, you know I'm Natalie. I am a St. Louis resident with my husband, Sam, and my beautiful baby boy. Well, not so much anymore. (laughs) One-year-old today, (laughs) Wesley. Um, And then we have a dog named Ruby, too. And I am a client relations specialist at a counseling space here in St. Louis. And then Sam is a mental health counselor. We actually work at the same place. <laughs> so fun. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, we, we enjoy our time with Wes and enjoy traveling together, which hasn't happened very often in the past <laughs> Two and a half years. <laughs> Pandemic and new one, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it back out there. And yeah, we met in 2010 at a job here in St. Louis and just became really quick friends. I went off to college. He started working in the St. Louis schools and then went to San Diego for a year. And then we both ended up back in St. Louis at the exact same time in 2016 and ended up reconnecting and have been together ever since. Yeah. Went to Australia three months into dating and (laughs) he ended up coming there to visit me for a week and moved right back in when I got back and here we are. (laughs) Yeah. And it was a lovely wedding, and I brought Arthur. He was only three months old. <laughs> yeah, slept all of our stuff all the way to Kansas City. It was a fun <laughs> wedding, though. <laughs> I know we were talking about that with some friends today. So much fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, were you and Sam like trying to conceive? Did you know you wanted to have babies pretty quickly after marriage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we. We always knew that we wanted a big family. I mean, I think that was like the talk of our wedding weekend. <laughs> like in my in our vows, we like both said like how many kids we wanted. Oh, <laughs> that was like the talk of the town. We always knew that we wanted a family. And so we were to you know, we got married in May 2019 and then May 2020, we decided, okay, like, you know, let's just kind of see what happens. So I remember like May 21st, I Went to my OB, got my IUD out, and then she was like, all right, just have fun. Like, like see what happens. And I was like, cool. And, yeah, we just had, like, a really great summer. It just kind of felt like a a new perspective in a way. Like, this could possibly be our last summer without a baby with us. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then August 24th, 2020, I decided to just take a test one morning because my period wasn't there. (laughs) Sure enough, that was a positive line. (laughs) And we just cried and we're so excited. I like woke Sam up. I'm like, Sam, I think I see a second line. Like, can you check for me? My eyes aren't fully awake. And he's like, Yeah, that's a line. Yeah. And it was just like such an amazing moment. Lots of holy shits. (laughs) Can I say that? And we did not shy away from like telling family and friends. Like, yeah, it was literally, pretty quickly. It was, <laughs> it was that weekend. I found out on a Monday, and like by Saturday, we had like friends and family all in the know. Like, we just can't hold secrets. <laughs> yeah, I remember you guys coming over, and you were working from home. Yeah, I think we all were home. Yeah, like it was twenty twenty. I was. <laughs> Preg- was I pregnant with Vivian yeah. by then? Yeah, because I had her before. Yeah. Wesley. So, yeah, you guys came over and you had pl- like put the pregnancy test down and you guys were all like looking at me like, like I, I was in a different room and I came <laughs> yeah. in and you guys were all looking at me like, 
don't you see it? I go, and I'm looking around like, what? Why is everyone staring at me? This is really weird in my head. Like, what too, did I do something weird? And then I saw it and just started crying yeah. immediately. Yeah. So exciting. It was a fun memory. Yeah. It's not often you get to be pregnant with your sister-in-law I know. at the same time. I know. So. You found out in, like, April, and I was in August. So, like, four four months apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, spent Christmas <laughs> as two pregnant yeah. ladies. It's so cute. It's where you might have, like, seen one of our pictures. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to post some more. Yeah. But, yeah, so after we found out we were pregnant, I knew I wanted to do the birth center here at Mercy just because of, like, Liz's great experience and then just, like, hearing a lot of positive experiences. So I did call my OB's office and, like, booked an appointment, but ended up canceling it and then went right into the birth center. And, like, from the very beginning, like, the care was just absolutely amazing. Like, our first appointment, we got a tour and, like, Sam fell in love with one of the midwives. Just, like, her, like, <laughs> charisma was just, like, so amazing. And, like, you just wanted to be around her. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we, like, all had a really great experience. And Sam was, like, so excited, so on board. So it just felt, like, really good to have his support, too. From there, pregnancy was really easy. I mean, yeah, like, I did feel a little nauseous, but, like, not as bad as some people. Yeah. And I'm so <laughs> blessed for that. So, yeah, and then we <laughs> accidentally found out it was a boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, were, you wanted to be surprised. <laughs> I, know. I know. At, like, our 10-week appointment, we did the blood test just to, you know, make sure everything checked out. And we were, like, on the fence of, like, finding out and, like, having the results on there. And then, of course, we didn't, like, really give a final answer to the midwives. And so they put the results on there. And, like, I got the email as Sam went into a therapy session <laughs> oh. and I saw it and it was like gender of fetus male. And I'm like, Oh shoot. Oops. Shoot. Sam, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I ran to target and like got a shirt for him to open, <laughs> but he ended up loving that. And then, yeah, I just like random stuff, like really bad carpal tunnel in my hands. I would have like the worst leg cramps too. Yeah. Did and you then- find anything that helped with that? The um, calm magnesium mm-hmm. was amazing. Everybody needs that, especially for constipation too. Yeah. <laughs> In the I beginning, was, I took that too. <laughs> yeah, I think you actually introduced me to it. It was so nice. <laughs> and then, like, I would just wear like wear a uh, hand brace when oh, I would yeah. go to sleep. And then I also had like magnesium lotion. It's like Maggie Moose mm-hmm. that the midwives told me about, but that was really amazing on my legs. And then just like once I hit like twenty ish weeks. I had the anatomy scan, obviously, and it was just, like, he's measuring really big. Like, everything on our scan showed, like, two weeks ahead, and mm-hmm. my belly showed two weeks ahead. And so I didn't feel alarmed because I think, I know, like, you were telling me, like, those can be so off. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about it. But then time went on, and it was just, like, you know, your fundal height is, like, two weeks ahead. And I remember just being told on inauguration day of 21, (laughs) like, don't rule out a C-section. And I had, I told Sam, don't worry about coming to this appointment. Like, I I just think it's going to be the glucose test. I'll be in and out. Don't worry. And then sure enough, like, that's when I was told, don't rule out a C-section. And it was just, like, really disheartening to hear that because, Mm -hmm. like, I'm different than my mom. Like, my mom, you know. They had like I had they had to break my collarbones to get me out because oh I was so big, but wow. she was so little. I'm like I don't have the same body type as uh-huh. her, and so just hearing that was just like yeah, really hard. I remember like calling Sam like just absolutely in tears, like like are we gonna have to induce? I didn't want that. I didn't. I really didn't want a C-section, but yeah. you know like anything to keep yeah just me caught you off guard yeah, yeah for sure. Me and my baby safe. And of course, yeah. I didn't have Sam at that appointment. So, yeah, it was even worse. Been better if he was there. That <laughs> yeah. support. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, that was pretty much pregnancy. It was good. It was, you know, he did get really big. My belly felt huge and just like lightning crotch by the end of it, for <laughs> <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> so, when you got closer to like 38 weeks, 39 weeks, did they talk about C section again? Did you have more? Not scans really. or anything or 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, after the 20 week ultrasound anatomy scan, I did have two other like maternal health ultrasounds where they were like checking height and weight and everything like that. And he was still measuring big, but not big enough where like we were going to go ahead and just schedule a Mm C-section. They were just going to kind of see what happened. And I think my final one was like around 28 weeks and everything kind of checked out. So they just kind of let me continue on. Yeah. I was happy about that. Good. Yeah. So, well, let's get into the the birth story, the day of. (laughs) It definitely starts before the day of. (laughs) Um, So it was Friday, April 16th. I was 37 and two, and we were heading to a Friday morning appointment for 37 weeks. And I remember listening to NPR radio on the way there. And it was about the George Floyd and Derek Chauvin case. Mm -hmm. And just my heart was just really heavy. And Mm -hmm. so I went into that appointment. And the first thing that they did was, of course, take my blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And it was... I don't know why they do it the first thing you go in. I know. (laughs) And it was high, like high for me. It was like 142 over 90. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, let's give it a second. We'll take it again. Mm -hmm. And we'll see. And it was high again. And then they took it at the end of the appointment again, and and it was like 138 over 90. And Michelle was my mm-hmm. midwife at that day, and she was, like, very amazing, like, for this care because she was, like, very, like, straightforward, which I think Sam and I both needed. Mm-hmm. Of course, like, my heart was heavy to hear that, but I think Sam, like, needed, like, here's what's going to happen. Here's the plan. Like, it's going to be okay. Yeah. And, okay. So they kind of like talk through some options, like, you know, let's go ahead and run some tests like protein and a stress test. So let's go ahead and run those additional tests, like to see if you are experiencing some preeclampsia, some preeclampsia. And I was like, okay. And Sam, I think just like needed some more answers because we really didn't, know much about it because I wasn't like showing any signs like Mm -hmm. everything was checking out throughout my whole pregnancy and so she gave us some options of like let's go ahead and like do a stress stress test take your proteins things like that so we decided to go ahead and like take some blood and take a urine sample and let's see what happens and so we ended up going home I was going to go into work, but then I had to, of course, call off because there could have been a possibility of induction. But I think the funny thing, but like the most serious thing for me was like the past two weekends, I just spent getting showered by my family and friends. Like I had baby (laughs) showers. And then the next day, Sam had a diaper party. Yeah. I was like, I feel so bad. I just had these amazing showers. And of course, like now we might be getting induced right now. And he's like, Natalie, you need to stop worrying about that. The the least concerning thing. I know. I know. So we decided to go ahead and go home and just rest. And my best friend, Jesse, is a labor and delivery nurse. And so I'm like, hey, I need to talk to you. I need to, like, get some nurse answers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so she told me kind of, like, the good and the bad about it. And she said, you know, it wouldn't hurt just to go ahead and go back, get that stress test, see what your levels checked out as, and just see what happens. And so sure enough, like, I got the stress test. I got the amniotic fluid check Mm -hmm. and everything checked out wonderfully so they're just like okay let's just monitor that blood pressure all weekend Mm -hmm. and you're gonna be back here monday morning or something like that yeah so yeah sam ended up getting his diaper party thank god (laughs) (laughs) and my blood pressures were nice all weekend thanks to thanks to liz for that blood pressure (laughs) oh the cuff yeah yeah (laughs) at home i had a lot of use from that too (laughs) yeah I was checking it all the time too because I'm like, I can't, like, please, please don't get out of yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. I would do it like in the morning and then in the evening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, everything checked out well and it was a good weekend overall. And then I actually went in on Tuesday morning. I was 37 and 5 at this point. So it was April 20th and my stress tests all looked good. 
my fluid looked good. So they said, you know, let's just continue on. And then I already had another appointment scheduled for Friday the 23rd, which I was 38 and two. And it was kind of the same Friday as before. Like my blood pressure was just like a little high. It Mm -hmm. wasn't 140s. It was like 139. Mm -hmm. Like, so like right on that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like right on that cusp. And kind of just like said the same thing. Like, let's just go ahead and let you keep going. But I did go ahead and opt for a sweep of Mm -hmm. a membrane. And I was already a centimeter and a half dilated. And my midwife, Maria, felt really good about everything. So she just said, you know, let's just keep going. Yeah. And then I went in on Monday, the 26th, and I was 38 and 5. Again, stress test. I was losing my mucus plug all weekend. And I was feeling good. And the stress test all looked wonderful. So kept going. (laughs) And then this is where things started. (laughs) So... I went to bed, and on Tuesday, April 27th, I woke up at 3 a.m., and I sat on the toilet, and I was like, okay, (laughs) I'm feeling some stomach things happening here, (laughs) and I, like, turned the lights on and kind of just sat there for a while, and Sam woke up, and he was like, hey, you okay in there? I'm like... I think something's happening. Yeah. And I, I've even texted you, like, how do you know that you're in labor? And you're like, you'll just know. You will know. Don't worry. You're good. <laughs> so I went back to bed. I texted my mid- my doula, Emma. And she said, you know, just rest. Here's some things that you can be doing, like exercises. You know, just rest. Mm-hmm. That's rest. the answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Drink water. Do what you can. I'm like, so I know I was having, like, a lot of bowel movements, like, mm-hmm. those two days. And I texted you. I'm like, is this normal? Yeah. And you're like, yes, making all the room for the baby. Yep. <laughs> so I was like, okay, we're good. <laughs> so, yeah, I went back to bed. And at 4 a.m., literally the same thing happened. I was, like, having those, like, stomach cramps again. And I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> this is going to be it if I'm already doing this. So I went back to bed. Of course, Alex Sam woke up at that point, too, asking if I was okay went back to bed and I woke up at 8 a.m. thinking, okay, you know, I have to go to work. Nothing really happened. (laughs) I'm going to go ahead and go to work. Seems like the hell you are. (laughs) You're not going to work. (laughs) Call in like we are having a baby. (laughs) And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, you know, if this already happened this early in the morning, I might as well just get this show on the road. And so at like 1030, I was like, you know, I'm going to do yoga I did like literally 50 squats. I'm like, oh my squat God. this baby out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and cranked out the raspberry leaf tea, mm-hmm. which like just really like funny side story. My girlfriend, Jessie, like texted her a picture and she's like, are you checking your urine? Are you getting induced? I'm like, no, it's, it's raspberry leaf tea, honey. <laughs> I thought it was full of tea. <laughs> <laughs> no. It was like the darkest yellow ever. <laughs> honey, No. <laughs> She's like, oh, okay, okay. 11.30 a.m., Sam and I went, like, on a quick walk, and he had a session for therapy at noon. Literally noon rolled around, and I timed my first contraction. (laughs) And I was like, wow, okay. And, like, I just knew it was a contraction. Yeah. It just felt different at this point. Yeah, you just (laughs) know. baby's like, hey, I'm trying to get out. (laughs) (laughs) So... It was happening. And so I started timing my contractions. They weren't really anything too terrible at this point. It was like very soft. My period prepared me well Mm -hmm. for those contractions. And everything kind of just went fine. I was kind of just like really being antsy, waiting for Sam to get out of session so I could tell him, (laughs) like, babe, we're happening. It's happening. (laughs) So like... Liz, you were texting me, like, all morning, and you're like, we're going to go to La Katrina for lunch. You guys should meet us. And I was like, we're totally there. Yeah. (laughs) Get one last meal in. (laughs) And so Sam got out of session at 1, and I'm like, so, yeah, I've been timing contractions for the past hour. Like, this is serious. And he's like, what? Are we going to go to the hospital? I'm like, no, babe, we're good. Like, we got plenty of time. And I'm like, we're still meeting Jason and Liz for lunch. Like, we got to (laughs) go. So we're like, okay, like, let's do, like, our final pack of our bag. And let's go to La (laughs) Katrina. And we walked out of the house with our bags in tow. And our neighbor, who, like, we literally never talked to, was like, 
oh my god is this it like is this gonna be <laughs> so it and we're like see ya yeah <laughs> and so we went to La Katrina and just like so funny like you guys had a bib with you so yeah. she was like <laughs> four months, four months old. <laughs> yeah <laughs> literally <laughs> And it was just, like, so funny being in that corner with you guys. Like, because she would, like, kind of make a little fuss. And I'd be, like, in contractions. <laughs> and, like, at this point, like Liz, sitting was out of the question. I was like, no way. I can't sit down. <laughs> and so I would just, like, be on the table, like, breathing. my You know, doing my breaths. Like, mm-hmm. we got this. We're good. Ate a spicy lunch, which I hear yeah. can kind of help <laughs> induce labor. And the waitresses, two waitresses literally asked me, ma'am, do you need an ambulance? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, no, we're good. good. <laughs> we got <Thank> this. <laughs> that was so funny. And yeah, like by the end of lunch, I was like, okay, like we got to go. And you guys were like, yep, just go. We got mm-hmm. it. <laughs> and so Sam and I headed home and we're like, all right, let's finally alert the troops after like two possible inductions. Like this is mm-hmm. probably it. We got to <laughs> tell our, we got to tell our parents now. And so, yeah, we called um, my dad and Sam's mom, like, you know. It's happening. Natalie is, con- you know, contracting. We're going to do this. So we decided just to go home for a little bit because I knew that I could keep handling these contractions. Mm-hmm. Like, they weren't anything out of question. And we went home, and I just put on, like, some calming music. I was, like, texting my doula. I had a chiropractor appointment, and my doula was, like, trying to say, like, you know, you should go. But I was, like, the last thing I can do right now is drive to South County and drive all the way back to Mercy. Yeah. Like, I could not be in a car. So I ended up canceling it and just, yeah, we were at home. It was like 2 p.m. at this point. And I just like got on all fours and I just like put my head on the ball, on the bouncing ball and just like listened to calming music and just like tried to get in this mindset of like, okay, you know, you got this. You're opening like a flower, <laughs> like do your breaths. All those affirmations. Yes, yeah. yes. I was trying to remember those before like I couldn't. And... It was good. And then I just remember being like, Sam, like, I don't really have a reason to cry, but I just like need to let out a good cry. Yeah. Don't worry about me. And he's like, you got it. Do it, babe. And at crying this point, releases those, those good hormones. Yeah. It just felt really good. Yeah. It was just like a moment of like, okay, you know, this is it. We're, yeah, it's a big moment. Is, yeah, we're doing it. So Sam was like on the phone with the midwives and he was so calm. And like, I know he was kind of like, you know, just questions were coming up for him, mm-hmm. of course, but like he was so calm and like just exactly what I needed at that point. And just, you know, just giving me like so many affirmations, which felt so good. Mm-hmm. And like the only point on my phone at this point was to time those contractions. <laughs> and then Sam was like my little messenger and he was like calling the midwives, you know, and I was still like, I was having pretty consistent contractions and I could like still like talk when I was, like, you know, when I was resting, I could talk to you and, like, have that conversation. Mm-hmm. But I was GBS positive. So they're like, okay, you know, you guys are having pretty consistent contractions. Let's go ahead and come in. Mm-hmm. And so we drove to the hospital. And I kind of sat. I remember, like, you telling me how you sat in the car. Yeah. So I kind of did the same thing. And I had, like, my knee, like, on the back seat. My butt was, like, literally hitting the car seat. <laughs> and I'm just hanging on to, like, the headrest. And... Sam was like, what do you want to listen to? And I'm like, the Lumineers, they're my favorite band. (laughs) And he started like going really fast. And Sam is not a fast driver. (laughs) And he was going really fast over the city streets. And I'm like, babe, Mm. you've got to slow down. Like the potholes. (laughs) These potholes are not helping actually. (laughs) Like, let's just go slow until we get to the highway. (laughs) And he's like, okay. And it was 3 o'clock, 3.30 at this point. So, you know, I didn't hit any rush hour, thank God. I don't know what I would have done. (laughs) Being in the car was just not fun. Mm -mm. And I remember pulling into the hospital at 3.41 p.m. And we walked in and I had, like, two contractions on Sam. And I just remember, like, the hospital, like, nothing else was there but me and Sam. (laughs) And I would just, like, lean on him and lay on him and just be like, whew, do the breaths. We're good. And then we walked right in. They're like, Natalie. <laughs> and I was like, hi. <laughs> and they checked me. And I wanted to be checked. Like, I wanted to know where I was. Uh-huh. I think for me, it was just like, it was just like giving me an idea of yeah. what I have, what I've done and like what I have left, I yeah, guess. Yeah, for sure. So I was a four. And I was having consistent contractions. Like, they were coming. 
And we ended up going to the summer room (laughs) and started getting hooked up. And yeah, my shirt came off pretty fast too, because (laughs) I'm like, you know, I'm going to be hooked up to got to get my antibiotics before antibiotics, whatever. (laughs) Got to get those before we start the show. And they were having the hardest time finding a vein. Oh gosh. So I was getting That's not fun while you're. I know. And I was just like, like, (laughs) I I was just like trying to be calm, but I'm like, come on. And it took like at least four people. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I was like, can you guys just like, give me a minute. I just can't do this right now. And so my doula showed up and she like kind of just took charge, like got the room (laughs) dim, got the diffuser going. And this is my first time actually meeting her in person. Oh, because of the pandemic, you yeah. we were doing, like, video yes. meetings. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. So it was really funny just being like, oh, hi. You're much taller than I thought you were. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> so it was really good seeing her and having her there. And then I got into the shower, and that was so amazing. I remember I just, like, needing to go pee, though. Like, it just felt like I had to go pee so mm. bad. And I tried, and, like, Sitting was out of the question, like I said, but I would try to go pee and nothing would come out. And I was just getting really frustrated about that. And so like I got in the shower and like had all this water on me, but nothing was helping this bladder. (laughs) It was really uncomfortable. And yeah, the water on me, like just, it was so hot and it just felt so good because that was like my period cramp. Like that's like how I dealt with period cramps, just like super hot water. Uh Like let's burn my skin (laughs) off. (laughs) And so, like, Sam had that on my back, and uh, that felt so good. And then my legs were just getting way too tired. Yeah. And so I got in the tub, and I was like, Sam, you should get in with me. And then he, like, put on his swim trunks because he <laughs> – I told him to bring, bring yeah. some swim trunks. And he got in, and then I'm like, okay, never mind, get out. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> it did not work out. No. <laughs> so I got in the tub, and I was just – just talking to Jenny because she was on it that night and just like how uncomfortable like this whole bladder thing was feeling mm-hmm. for me. I don't know what it was. I think it was almost like my mind too was like yeah. getting in the way <laughs> and I wanted to be checked again. And so she checked me and I was at a five and I was just like, mm, dang it. Okay. And then in the tub, my back started to burn mm. and it turned into like uterine contractions to back labor. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And this is where just kind of everything changed for me. You know, Emma would, like, do the shaking apples on me. Like, Mm -hmm. she was, like, literally leaning over the, like, leaning over me, had, like, her feet, like, on each side of the tub Mm -hmm. and was, like, putting all of her weight on my back. Yeah. And it felt so good. But then as soon as she would stop, like, the the fire would just, like, go right back to my back. And I was getting so uncomfortable. And we knew Wesley was kind of like facing the wrong way like his his okay so like his face was like facing my left hip oh and so michelle i like those appointments was like normally babies don't turn counterclockwise they only turn clockwise oh weird i never knew that yeah so <laughs> like west could so would have had to turn a whole like a- well, yeah. 360 pretty much oh my gosh yeah he was like just he was like looking like at my left hip like my left butt cheek kind mm-hmm. of and yeah like so he would have to do a whole turn and did so, they have you do like spinning babies i did like one exercise at home yeah and it was hard yeah it's like i was not really working out by the end of my pregnancy <laughs> so like my arms were just weak yeah so weak <laughs> And, yeah, so we kind of knew that he was making that turn and is it was coming to, like, the conclusion that, like, his head was, like, literally on my sacrum. Mm -hmm. So I think he was, like, in the midst of turning when, like, all of this happened and, like, then his head just landed there. And so my uterine contractions that I was feeling just turned to extreme back labor. And it was it was rough. Like, I literally don't remember feeling a uterine contraction after the back labor started. And so the tub, I was just, like, kind of feeling just, like, ready to get out of the water. My skin was oh, yeah. getting, like, very hydrated. <laughs> yeah, pretty. And so I'm like, okay, like, let's get on the bed. 
So I got on the bed and I was just on all fours. And this is kind of when like my, I was living outside of my body. Mm -hmm. Like I was up above watching myself go through this, Mm -hmm. but the pain was so real. And so I was on all fours. I did ask to get straight calf, which I don't know why I did. It was like my mind was like playing these tricks on me Mm -hmm. that like this would help me feel better. Yeah. And so I asked for that, like hindsight 2020. I don't know why. Did it help at all? I think it helped like the release of like you were holding a bladder that you could not get out. Uh And like, so it did feel, it was like a little bit of a release, but like nothing helped (laughs) in the back labor area. And so we got that out. And they were like, they're like, okay, like that was a good amount. Like you did have something in there. And I was like, yeah, I could feel it, but it, I couldn't even like let it drop out. Yeah. So it felt so weird. And so I was on all fours on the bed after this point. And the midwife that Sam fell in love with was like also our like birthing, I mean, like instructor, like class instructor. Mm-hmm. And then she came in. And so like, we both were just like, oh, my God, Carmen, we love you. And she, like, I remember she, like, whispered in my ear, but I was so out of it at this point. Like, you got this. Like, mm-hmm. you're so strong. And I was like, I love you. <laughs> but, like, right now I can't even think about anything but my back. And even, like, after that happened, Emma was like, yeah, like, I would shake as hard as I could, like, do the shaking apples on your back and I would just like literally see your back just like tighten. Oh gosh. And <laughs> I pulled that out my back. Like I know what the back feels like yeah. of like the worst pain ever. Uh-huh. And it was just getting so bad that like I was losing my breath. I was like hyperventilating almost mm-hmm. like this hurts so bad. And I was like, Jenny, you know, you have to check me if I'm not I was like, Sam, if I'm not at an eight, like, I need to go. This is, this is hard. Mm-hmm. I feel like I can't, like, rhythm myself anymore. Yeah. I like was kind of scaring. Dysregulated. Yeah. Yeah. I was, like, scaring myself. And so she checked me, and I was at a six. And I'm like, you know, Oof. Sam, I know I told you, like, I wanted to do this so bad, but my pain is at, like, a 12. Yeah. Like, we well, have Well, you to did. Go. You did almost was- 75% of it. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> I mean, by that point, it was, I, we were at the hospital for like five hours at that point. Yeah. So I was five hours of like serious labor Yeah, and I only progressed two centimeters, which like, I know the numbers like don't matter, but at the same time, it's like, I yeah. just couldn't handle. Well, when the baby's more. not in optimal position, yeah. it just doesn't always work the way you wanted it to. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, um, pivot. Yeah. <laughs> pivot. <laughs> yeah, so we pivoted for sure. After that, you know, Emma and Sam were kind of like having like their own conversations while I was like in labor. You know, they were kind of like, let's just let's keep going. Let's see what happens. We know that she wants this. So let's just see what happens. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like I said, you know, I was just kind of like. I can't control my body anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At and, that point, it's not just like mind over matter. It's mm-hmm. you're in too much pain. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like out of breath because like, you know, I was breathing in through my nose, out through my mouth, like the whole time. And then at this point I was like, <gasps> oh my God. And it's just like, that's not fun. No. That's not fun. <laughs> I don't want to be like that. No. And so we decided to call the troops in. <laughs> and so <laughs> we like got. You know, they got me a room upstairs and things started happening. And Emma Tula made me do one last exercise of the one I tried at home, which is like all arms. So you literally have like your arms on the floor while your knees are up on the bed. Uh. And I was like, I'm going to fall over. Like, I'm going to fall. And it was like not safe. Like, I could have easily just like fell. And it was rough. I was like, honey, I don't have any arm strength. Remember this? <laughs> Just leave me alone. <laughs> and I remember just like coming back up from the ground and being like, honey, honey, I am done. Like if you remember like Linda, honey, listen, that little boy. I was like, honey, I am done. <laughs> and 
Museum. Mike still reminds me of that to this day. Like, <laughs> honey. <laughs> and so I remember, like, things quickly happening at this point. I remember they brought in a wheelchair, and I'm like, praise heaven. Like, we're going upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> and I got on that wheelchair. I got a blanket over me. I was like, yeah, let's get this show on the road. And there was definitely like a calmness that washed over me. Although I was still having contractions and my back was killing me. I like just finally felt calm for like a moment. Mm -hmm. And they just like wheeled me right up to the labor delivery floor. And there were like so many people in there at this point. Like the elevator, I don't even remember who. Like a birthing center nurse, a labor delivery nurse. Anyway, we got upstairs in a labor and delivery room and again excuse me so many people in the room at once Mm. and thank god they weren't busy or something because the anesthesiologist came right in oh that's good (laughs) oh my god thank god God. (laughs) sometimes i can take a long time (laughs) i know i know so thank god they did and i just like sat on that edge of that bed and me and sam were just like holding like our foreheads together and everything just like felt Calm. It was like again that moment of just like us two right mm-hmm. there, and the anesthesiologist came in, and his name was Christopher, oh. <laughs> which we already knew was going to be my son's middle name for my little brother. Which was I was like, oh, this is kind of perfect right now. Kismet. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. And I got that epidural, and oh my god, things really just like turned around for me, and I was just like, there's Natalie, mm-hmm. you know, like she's calm again. There she is. And it just felt so nice. And it was like 9, 9, 9.30 at this point, I guess, 9.30 p.m. And we both got a nap in. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> we got some snacks in. And I was just feeling good. Like, I could, you know, joke with people and just talk to them and make sense of what happened in mm-hmm. the last five hours. And so it felt really nice. And, yeah, things kind of just... Yeah, like, I napped from, like, 11 to midnight. It felt pretty good. My girlfriend, Hannah, who works there, who is also pregnant, <laughs> came up and, like, said hi. We got some rest. That was so nice. And Maria was the midwife that was taking over that night. And I was so happy. She was she was one of my favorites, for sure. So the midwife followed you? She did. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no OB came in. And it was just, like, nurses talking to the midwife. So that felt really nice. nice. Yeah, they didn't just transfer you to just someone you didn't know. Exactly. Like, let me go. (laughs) (laughs) So that was really special. And so, yeah, Maria was there. And I think I got checked probably, like, around. So, yeah, I was kind of just, like, laying on the bed and, like, had the peanut ball. And so that Mm -hmm. was opening me up for sure. And I think I got checked probably like around like one and I was like nine. Oh, wow. I was like, okay, yeah. Okay. So you progressed <laughs> af- a lot after you got the epidural. Seriously. Because you were able to rest. and Yeah. Everything yeah. just happened. That's good. Which was so nice. And then he was still like stations pretty high, stationed pretty high in my belly. And so they're like, you know, your I think your bag of waters is... Like, what's keeping him so high? Because yeah. I my water still isn't broken. Yeah. So it <laughs> still hasn't broke at this point. So he was, I think he was, like, almost like a minus two. So he was, like, still pretty high. Yeah. And so, yeah, Maria just kind of, like, let me go again. And then it was, like, 2, 2, 2.30 a.m. at this point. And she came back up and checked me and said I was at a 10. And let's just, you know, give it a few minutes to push. And so this was, like, probably the best part of the night. <laughs> Sam went to the bathroom. And, like, the bathroom was, like, like when you walked out, you could, like, see right on me at the, uh-huh. in the bed. <laughs> and so I, like, got readjusted with my nurse and my doula. And I, like, sat up in bed. And my bag of water just literally fell out of me <laughs> like a water balloon. <laughs> It was the weirdest feeling. And Sam walked out of the bathroom at that moment and just like saw a big (laughs) splash on the floor. And we all just go, well, that was fun. (laughs) And like 
Me and Sam literally high five and said, <laughs> let's get this party started. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just like so funny, like just like made everything so much more useful. <laughs> and so I think the nurse just alerted my midwife and the midwife came up and was like, okay, like, yeah, he is, he is in the birth canal. Like, let's do this. <laughs> and it was three oh one AM and I started pushing and Sam looks at Maria and goes, so how long do you think this is going to take? And Maria <laughs> goes, she is the best time, the best first time pusher I've ever seen. So yeah. <laughs> I could see this taking maybe 30 minutes. And so I started pushing and, oh, I forgot to say my Sam's best friend's wife is a labor and delivery nurse at Mercy, Mm -hmm. another Emma. (laughs) And she ended up coming up for the birth. And so she was like Wesley's (laughs) baby nurse. Yeah. Shout out to Emma. Love (laughs) you. And so, yeah, I started pushing at like 301 and it was just easy. I couldn't feel when I was having a contraction though. Mm -hmm. So the team was just like, all right, here we go. Get ready (laughs) and push. (laughs) And, All this was happening and Maria came in or Maria was there. And then she's like, so Natalie, (laughs) I have another mom literally exactly where you are right now in the birthing center. And I'm the only one that can deliver that baby. Right. Because there's no no one else down there. Yeah. (laughs) We're all on call. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, we're going to be okay. (laughs) And so we finally got a resident in. I think her name was Jessica. We got a resident in the delivery and Maria was like, okay, so this is my patient, Natalie. Like they were like doing a quick handoff literally right in front of me. She's like, you know, this is my patient, Natalie. She had, she was born with two broken collarbones. And I think my, the resident at this point took it as I've had a baby that had like shoulder dystocia. Oh, (laughs) so like I have. Yeah, like I had a first birth that had shoulder dystocia. And so she was like really worried. Uh-oh. <laughs> and she's like, I need a doctor in here right now. Like, yeah, she was a doctor. She was a resident. But, like I need an attending or whatever yeah. they are in here right now. And and they also like can't deliver like without a doctor in the room. And so, you know, I was like still kind of just pushing. I was like fully aware of what was happening. And Maria left and the resident was taking over. And he was like, yeah, it was just like really easy. He was like coming right out. Like yeah. I felt his head. <laughs> Sam was watching the whole thing, which I did not think was going to happen because yeah. he was so iffy on this <laughs> and queasy about it. But no, he like watched. He felt his head. Oh, wow. And I just, yeah, I just remember like the resident being like, literally need a doctor in here oh right now. Gosh. Like this baby is being born. <laughs> and so his name was Dr. Boyd. He literally threw on a gown and Wesley was born <laughs> a minute later at 3.31 a.m. Wow. So literally oh 30, God, minutes, 30 minutes, <laughs> 30 minutes from, and Maria said it was going to be 30 minutes. <laughs> and we had like three names that we went to the hospital with. And like, as soon as I just saw him, I'm like, Sam, he's Wesley. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, they put him on my chest and so beautiful. He, he smelled like an angel. It's like, what's <laughs> that? And yeah, he just had like a little extra fluid in there. And so they took him away. And I just remember like kind of seeing like a cord go down like his throat, like a suctiony thing. Mm -hmm. And that was really hard. Yeah. Because I had like a second degree tear. And so, you know, they were stitching me up and Sam was with Wes the whole time. And he came back and he was fine. Nothing, nothing serious. Mm -hmm. And he came back and we just, that was Life as we know. <laughs> he was so, so perfect. And he, he smelled so good. I'm like, how do you smell this good coming out of my body? And he, yeah. Everything perfect. I couldn't have asked for anything better. <laughs> and yeah, just everything changed in that moment. I became a mom. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, trying not to cry. <laughs> It was just, like, all happiness all around. I really couldn't have asked for anything better. You know, Wes was safe. I was safe. Everything was good. And, yeah, Sam cut the cord, and we were all good. And everything just, like, happened so quickly. Like, 
the doctor was in there for literally a minute and Wes was out <laughs> and everything was cleaned up so fast. I was stitched up so fast and like literally by 4 a.m. everything was just calm again. Wow. Like it was just me, Wes and Sam. Yeah. How it always should be. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I was, it was like 4 a.m. and we finally, I think we waited until like 5.30 ish, 6 a.m. to like call our parents and stuff. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> Yeah, Sam's mom was, like, on FaceTime like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we are like, texting our families. I'm like, guess his name. Just so perfect. Eight pounds, seven ounces. April 28th. So, one year today. Yeah, today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yesterday was much more emotional than today. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, oh, you know, I've started laboring right now. I yeah. started, we've been to the hospital right now. Went back to La Katrina yesterday, too. Yeah. <laughs> Which I loved. And yeah, then we, I went to the bathroom and went over to mom and baby. And like, I felt so great. Like really, really good. That's Nothing. Awesome. Yeah. Like I just went to the bathroom easily. I was having bowel movements easily. That's like, good. Yeah. I was well, really scared. First ones. <laughs> I was so scared yeah. for those. I'm like, nothing. It was just That's like, awesome. yeah, it was really easy. And the hospital was great. Breastfeeding seemed to like happen really quick mm-hmm. like the next morning maria came in to like check his latch and she said a plus like really, that's amazing yeah so it was going really good when we did go over to mother baby the nurse was like his temp is pretty low and it was like 94 degrees oh weird yeah so like they had him under a heater for a while and yeah. i just remember it, it was like four hours that they had him and yeah. i'm like he has to eat like yeah. come on <laughs> what is taking so long I think I, like, called my nurse, like, three or four times at that point. <laughs> and we went home the next day and just settled into a family as three, of three. <laughs> and plus our dog. So dog. how long was it all together? From, like, first contraction, 24 hours. But from, like, active labor, like, 15 hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty quick. Yeah, it didn't feel too bad. Yeah. So how was your postpartum experience like? It was pretty good. I've had a lot of experience with, like, babies, but, like, not so much newborns. Mm -hmm. The sleeping, like, (laughs) my pregnancy almost prepared me for, like, how little of sleep I was getting. (laughs) So I was up, like, all the time from, like, leg cramps, carpal tunnel, (laughs) or going to the bathroom. And so... Like, the nights didn't seem, like, too, too hard. But then again, I'm a year out. And, like, <laughs> damn, I just, like, blocked it out yeah, mentally. <laughs> like, he, he, like, for the most part, I would feed him and, then like, he would go back to sleep. Uh-huh. Of course, though, like, I was trying to exclusively breastfeed. Mm-hmm. And so, like, Sam would, you know, get up with him. And he would just, like, keep crying. And we're, like is he still hungry? And so like I la- he'd latch on and then he'd like fall asleep. Mm-hmm. And so we'd be like, okay, we're going to put him down. Here we go. And then he'd be like up and crying again. So I'm like, like, I don't know. Like, are you still hungry? I don't know. Anyway, like the nights, Sam doesn't do well. I'm too, <laughs> too little sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and so we ended up coming like up with a plan that like I would pump bottles for the night. Mm-hmm. And so my milk came in at like day four and I would, like, pump bottles for the night and, like, breastfeed him during the day. And it actually worked out really well. Yeah. So, like, Sam had, like, okay, here's four ounces. Like, I can give him. Mm-hmm. And so after I started pumping bottles through the night, it was pretty easy. Yeah. That's it wasn't plan. too bad. Yeah. And, like, my sister would come over and help, like, through the night. Oh, thank God. Like, she was she was a saving grace <laughs> for amazing. sure. amazing to yeah. have that support. Yeah. She was great. <laughs> And so, like, you know, it was, like, a week, maybe two weeks in, and, like, she came over for a whole night. Wow. <laughs> and she let Sam and I go to sleep in our bed together oh, for, like, the first time in two weeks. And we were just, like, we're talking to each other <laughs> before we go to bed. <laughs> but, yeah, breastfeeding was going really well. There was, like, a point where he was, like, smacking a lot. Like, mm-hmm. and so... My girlfriend, who is a labor and delivery nurse, Jesse, actually came over and was like, I think you might be too engorged for him. So I would, like, pump myself 
to like get a little relief. Oh, wow. And yeah. then I would feed him and like he would start to do a lot better. Uh-huh. And then I also took him to the chiropractor pretty early on. And I mm-hmm. think that really helped like mm-hmm. her magic. Woo. <laughs> and that was really great. My anxiety was pretty high though. And I don't think, I think I like gave Sam all the ideas for like postpartum depression. Like here's things to look out for. Mm-hmm. I need you to look out for me. And I think I prepared him pretty well. Maybe almost too much. <laughs> <laughs> was he checking in too much? <laughs> I think mean, I like, scared him in a way. I'm oh. like, I'm going to be really sad. <laughs> but I don't think I really understood the anxiety part until I talked to you. Mm-hmm. Because I was like a week and a half postpartum. And I went to my sister's graduation party. And wow, I've never felt so much anxiety. Like I never really was an anxious person. Like mm-hmm. I could do well in social settings and then having that was just so much like I couldn't even carry on a conversation without almost crying and I would like I was just like trying to get away I'm like I have to go feed Wes yeah he he needs to eat and I have to go to the car and like yeah like I just never want to feel like that again yeah anxiety is it's really rough because you don't know if it's oh I'm a new mom and I'm just like this is how I'm supposed to feel because I'm caring for another human being now. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's not, it's, it's not normal. And you don't have to feel that way. You know? yeah. 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 It's hard to recognize. It is. And then it was like, also two days later was like mother's day. And so we went all, all went over to our mother-in-law's me and Liz's mother-in-law's house. And Everything was, like, okay, and that was, like, my first drink, (laughs) and it was okay, but then after we left, I had, like, a mental breakdown in the car. Yeah, I remember you being really quiet. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely didn't feel like myself. It was just, like, constant worry. Yeah. And, like, just home was just comfortable, like, where I needed to be. And I remember, like, people would, like, come over and see us and, like, bring food, which was so amazing, but then I... You know, six, seven o'clock would roll around. I'd be like, okay, you need to leave. Like, but I can't tell you that because I'm not a mean person. Mm. But like, oh my God, you know, night's gonna, night's here, like, night's approaching, and I have to be up with this child. And like, come on, you have to go. And I don't think I'm realizing that until like now. Like, it was another level. Mm-hmm. Like, just making sure that people left at like six o'clock mm-hmm. when they would get there at like five o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you can't spend too much time here. You yeah. have to go to sleep. It's hard. To, yeah, because you want to be on a schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you want, yeah, my mindset was, like, if I keep my baby on a schedule, everything will be fine. Mm-hmm. Everything will be good. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then just, like, I remember, like, getting home from the hospital and just, like, crying a lot. But I think that was, like, normal. Like, my yeah. home, my, my my hormones were regulating. Yeah, the baby blues. <laughs> yeah. So that kind of felt normal. And then after Mother's Day, I called the midwives and were midwives who were just like, you know, my anxiety just feels really high. And they're like, okay, you know, just keep monitoring monitoring that. Like it doesn't sound like it's postpartum depression, but just like keep an eye on yourself, have mm-hmm. your partner check in with you, that kind of thing. And the the nurse I ended up talking to was like a few months postpartum too. And Mm -hmm. she's like, I know how you feel. I was just there. So that felt really good. And then everything kind of just started to like lifted after a while. That's good. Once you kind of recognize it. Yeah. And like talk about it. Yeah. I think things get better for sure. For sure. And you feel those demons. Like once you find someone else that is going through it or has (laughs) gone through it and you can talk to them about it. It really just helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I was feeling down, but, I was like, I don't feel, like, depressed. Mm -hmm. But it was just, like, social settings and, like, the night dawning on us. I was just like, oh, God. Yeah. Nights are rough and lonely. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. So, also, between all this, like, five days postpartum, I interviewed for a new job. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. I was actually supposed to interview on the night that Wesley was born. 
you know, like texted them in the hospital, like, hey, this interview is not going to happen. I'm in the hospital. <laughs> They're like, okay, like, you know, just have your baby. We'll reschedule. <laughs> so I interviewed and five days postpartum and got the job. And so my maternity leave, <laughs> yeah, my maternity leave was cut really short. Oh, yeah. I was back to work at five weeks. Oh, my gosh. So that was really hard. Thankfully, thankfully my aunt came in town and, you know, Sam made his own schedule and my sister and my niece, like we had so much support, mm-hmm. but it was still really hard for me. Like, you know, I was still like trying to figure out like, yeah, that's really early. Pumping. It was so yeah. early and it just, yeah. Like I wanted the job so bad that like I made the sacrifice, but it was really hard. Yeah. yeah and I was like pumping there and like, I just remember like this guy being like, what, what are you doing? Uh-huh. <laughs> So, yeah, it was rough. And then just Sam and I went through, like, two really hard periods. Like, his his dad passed away a few months into it, and that was, like, a pivot mm-hmm. for sure. And grappling with those emotions and, yeah, a lot of therapy, a lot of help. Yeah. A lot of cries, <laughs> things like that. So... Yeah, that was really hard for the both of us. More so Sam, I think, because, you know, I lost my mom, like, six years ago. So, like, I was, I'm okay. I'm doing okay. But, like, you know, Sam, it was all new. He became a father. It was really sudden, Yeah, it was really sudden. So, that was really rough. Um, And then I got back on birth control thinking, you know, I I don't want to have another baby for a while. (laughs) And my milk supply just, like, completely plummeted. Yeah. And so, you know, things were, like, going so well. And then they weren't with, like, the birth control and, like, Mm -hmm. taking away my milk supply so fast. And so I ended up only breastfeeding for, like, three and a half months. Mm -hmm. So we went to formula. And, yeah, it's been really great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) there were things, but you just deal with them and you just get through it. Yeah. And everything's been really, really great. That's good. Yeah. And today is the the last day of formula? <laughs> Actually, we kind of ended that like last week. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, he still it's, gets it at daycare, but. Yeah. <laughs> We've been pretty nice. much cutting it out. <laughs> and he's on whole milk. Nice. And eating three meals and snacks. Yeah. He's a real boy. <laughs> he's a boy. <laughs> yeah. And he is just the best. I couldn't ask for anything more. That's good. <laughs> so do you have any advice For other pregnant women or new moms. Take the pressure off. Just, it's okay. Everything's going to be okay. Like, you're the best mother for that child. And Mm -hmm. you've got this. Lean on your friends. Lean on your support system. Never be afraid to ask for help. Lean on your partner. Like, try to do something for yourself. So, just, yeah. That's really good advice. (laughs) (laughs) I love the, your, the mom your baby needs yeah Yeah, you're the best mom yeah (laughs) you've got it hang in there we it's just the newborn stage and you just get through it and everything just seems better and better yeah is there anything else you want to add Hmm. I do want to add that anyone struggling with infertility I love you I pray for you and I just I'm sending you all the baby dust you know, I haven't gone through it myself, but I just kind of wanted to give that shout out. So, well, thank you, Natalie, for sharing <laughs> <laughs> Leslie's birth story. It was so special to do it on his actual birthday. It was. <laughs> it's been a good day. Yeah. And thank you for listening. And again, shout out to Donnie Rogers for a beautiful intro song. Yeah. And share our podcast with your friends and family and anyone you think might like it. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thanks. (laughs)